completed week seven of this gut check series based out of the book of James, in particular chapter five, verses seven through 12, which in my copy of scripture is titled, Patience and Suffering. And James is really kind of defining suffering for us, but also allowing us to understand what does it look like to move through suffering. In fact, have patient perseverance was the theme that we really talked about. So the definition of suffering in particular is to labor or endure under something out of your control. Right? I think we can all understand this, to labor or, or endure out of something that is out of your control. You can also see this kind of as a weight on your shoulders, something that uh, you are underneath, so to speak, whether it be uh, grief that you're walking through, a difficult scenario, maybe some reg regret from the past, um, responsibilities that you might have, maybe even something that God has asked you to do that you don't feel like you have even the power to do, but you know that he called you to it for a reason. So what is it going to look like for me to work through this, to have that, that patient perseverance as the Spirit of God leads? And so the last thing that we want to do with that weight as, as human beings is to be patient, right? James writes that. It's like, here's all these difficulties you're going through, and here's a correct response or a proper response. Be patient. Well, we don't want to do that, right? I know I don't want to do that, but that's what James is writing to us here, is that God is calling us to be patient in our times of trials and suffering that requires perseverance. We want to fix things immediately. We want a cure like that and just to pray a prayer and it um, is just all of a sudden gone. But more often than not, that's just simply not going to be the case for us. So what does it look like for, for us to persevere? The reality is, and again, the foundation of this past Sunday was that patience is the essence of perseverance. Patience, being able to not only not just wait by sitting and just crossing your hands and hoping something good happens, but but waiting within action as well. It's kind of uh, seems like an oxymoron a little bit that the waiting we're going to do it actually requires certain actions to follow God in the midst of it in order to be able to persevere, and so perseverance ultimately in suffering and hardship takes time. It's not something, again, that is instantaneous. We must be willing to remain in the process. And so I love the illustration that James gives as well about the farmer waiting on the rains of the autumn and the spring to be able to um, help the crops grow. This idea that a farmer doesn't just plant a seed and then the next day goes to harvest. No, it takes time in the middle for that plant to, to be able to grow to the point of harvest. But that doesn't mean the farmer just sits around and does nothing. In fact, it, it means that the farmer is preparing for the harvest, is doing different things that are required of a farmer to be able to um, put that person in, in best position to, um, to be able to harvest well and harvest properly and have the most benefit or yield for their crop possible. So as opposed to trusting God, no matter the trial that we walk through, even if we might say we will, our natural response and reaction is to maybe pull away or draw away from God when we get into the dark valley, right? It's, it's not us wanting to um, embrace the difficulty. It's actually want us wanting to run away or get away from it or just move through it without any trial or any difficulty that we might experience. But what we need to recognize, we need to realize and, and hold tightly to this truth is that the God that we say that we trust is always for us and he's never against us. Sometimes our actions and our responses can communicate that God is not for us when really we know the truth that he is and we need to be able to embrace that and trust that truth and understand that our God is a God of compassion, a God of love, and a God of mercy. And so a couple questions I have for you to think about uh, moving forward this week is first, when was the time in your life that you experienced a trial and you chose actually to run away from God? Think about that. What does that look like for you? Is there uh, something that you learned from that that you'd be willing to share with others or just learn from uh, even yourself? Second question, when you hear the phrase, God is always with you, what does that make you think of? What does that make you picture? 
Well, how do you envision what that looks like in the midst of a trial? And then number three, what will it take for you to draw near to God in the face of trials? Instead of running away from the Lord, instead of trying to trust your own judgment and your own guidance, what will it look like for you to draw nearer to Him? Thank you.